I've met people who self-identify as gay and they're together, etc., who seem a lot more committed in their love relationship than some heterosexual couples. Are. Okay, I think we all probably know people like that. What I'm saying to this, and that's why I took you through those seven steps, because you know, there could be some heterosexual couples who are on stage number five where really they're quite desensitized to each other, they're just going through the emotions and that's it. But some others might be just be slightly missing the mark. And what I'm saying about the missing the mark thing is this, is you see, I, 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 because I don't know the ins and outs of these people's lives, there's no way I can sit there and cast real, I mean, I wouldn't be casting judgment anyway, I've got no right to judge. But my point is this is, we are all in some way or other missing that mark. Now, I'll say this to you, when a man finds another man sexually attractive, okay, then what happens is the way he sees other men can be affected by that. And I've come to understand, and hundreds and thousands of us too, is that actually, we realise that maybe God hasn't called us to, to see each other that way. We can all get, hear me right in this, I say stuck. And I'm not saying all oh, your friends are stuck because though other people aren't stuck. They might be more unstuck than most people. Do you get what I mean? I mean, I was, one of the happiest times of my life at that stage was when I was in my long-term relationship with my boyfriend, Steve. We were the model gay Christian couple. But it was from there, I didn't think it could get better than that. But because I was open to what God might want to do, he showed me there was yet more love. The only thing I would do is say to your friends, as I would say to you, and I would equally say it to all three of you, the couple and you, are all of you truly open to, get to engaging with the Creator in such a sacrificial and humble, committed way that you die to your own will, that you would say, have you got anything more in store for me? Because I don't, because if God has, they might be missing out on more love that God has. I don't know what he'll do. So here, please, please it's, really, it's really important you hear that I'm, I'm not, I can't cast a judgment on them, but I can say this is, we all have space and places in our lives where we need to repent a bit more and say, Lord, you've got more waiting for me. And what I've noticed, and look, I mean, I've dealt with couples in my groups where people have been together 20 years, and then suddenly everything fell to bits. They said, I've waited 20 years. I said, no, you didn't. You learned a lot in those 20 years. But God has now moved you onto a different pathway. I can't go to them and say, well, you shouldn't be in this. You know, I don't know what God's doing in their lives. And neither do you. So we're called to be humble with each other, to be honest with each other where we need to be. And, you know, I don't know where they suffer, where they're tempted. I don't know where they rejoice. And we've got to walk with each other in all of those areas too. Today, what happens is, and you heard it in the, in the, in the video bit, in the DVD bit, is the woman said, you know, I walked into church and there were all these Christians and I was told that Christians hate you. Well, when did you walk into a church and somebody say, lesbian, gay, straight, tick the box, please? Never. <laughs> Never. You might have done it at a metropolitan church, but you, would, you wouldn't in no Because basically, we all come in and we're going, oh, we're all broken. Let's get on with it. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that <laughs> I've screwed up. Big time. Have mercy, Lord. That's, we have to invite each other to come there. I have no idea what God's going to do on their journey. Thank you.